Hi everyone. This is going to be a video walkthrough of the large vessels of the neck, the upper chest, and the lower abdomen. And we're going to be looking at the differences and similarities in the models that we use in Bio 139 Lab and the human cadaver. Now, in this video, I am going to be showing some pretty graphic images of a human cadaver, so be prepared for that. Some of you hopefully will be able to get into our cadaver lab, but for those of you who are not able to, this will kind of give you an idea of what you might expect to see on an actual human cadaver compared to our models. Now, in our images, I'm going to be showing several different images uh, that seem to be very, very similar to each other. Some of them are just to give you an idea of size. Some of them are comparing the model to the cadaver. Some of them are labeled. Some of them are unlabeled. So this should be used as a study tool also. But first, before we start learning anything, this is just to give you an idea of the scale or the size of some of the things we're going to be looking at. Now, what we see here is the cadaver's uh, kind of underside of her jaw, her neck, and then the upper part of her chest. The skin has been reflected back from the right side of her face, and we're starting to just get into a little bit of the deeper structures of the neck here. And this is to give you an idea of the size of a couple of the vessels that we're going to be looking at. So these are some vessels in the neck that we will be learning in just a little bit. This is my left index finger. So you can see that this vessel is actually a little bit bigger around than my left index finger. So these vessels are pretty large as far as the ones that we're going to be learning today. So let's go a little bit deeper and start seeing the actual vessels that we're going to be learning today. So now what we're looking at, and to orient you the direction that we're facing and what we're seeing here, this is that same cadaver. Up at the top of the screen, we see the under part of her jaw. Right here is the neck, and moving downward, we now see the upper part of the chest, the middle part of the chest, and down here is the upper part of the abdomen. So that will kind of orient you. And we're not going to start labeling anything on this image because everything's still a little bit too small and it can be a little disorienting. But let me talk first about something we're going to be looking at in another video. This structure right here is the heart. So the heart right in the center of the chest, the rib cage. The front of the rib cage has been removed, all of the skin, all of the muscle reflected back. And here we can see I'm holding the pericardium. So when we first opened the chest, the heart was hidden behind that pericardial membrane, that two layer membrane that we learned in Bio 137, that we talk a little bit about here in Bio 139, but that membrane was cut. Here we see one side of it, but most of it is folded back and being pulled off to the side this way. This large, thick structure right here is continuous with this pericardium. So we see a little bit of the pericardium down here, but this is the diaphragm, the muscle that we use to breathe. So the diaphragm is not only helping us to breathe, it's also separating the chest cavity from the abdominal cavity, or the thorax from the abdomen. Now we're going to zoom in and start looking a little closer at these structures right here. And that's what we see in this image. So again, let me go back. We're just taking this area right here. So from the very upper part of the heart to the very very upper part of the neck. And that's what we see here. Here's that very uppermost part of the heart. And now these structures 
in this image, I've not got them labeled. This way you can refer back, you can test yourself, you can try to label some of these things. But what I'm going to do is compare this to the model after we label everything. So here's our unlabeled image, and now the exact same image labeled, and we're going to finalize it by comparing it to the model. So let's look at what we've got labeled here. This large vessel right here, coming out of the superior part of the heart, or the upper part of the heart. This is the aorta, the largest vessel in the body. And in a separate video, when I do a walkthrough of the heart, we're going to see just how big that aorta is, and it was extremely large. It, it can be a little shocking how big the aorta is. So I've got the aorta, the ascending aorta, the arch of the aorta, and we can just see as it begins to descend the descending aorta. Now let's go through and look at the arteries before we start looking at the veins. So if we're coming up through the aorta, the aorta has a few branches coming off of it. The first thing that branches off of the aorta is the brachiocephalic artery, or the brachiocephalic trunk. The brachiocephalic artery is quickly going to branch into a few vessels. The only one that we're concerned with here that I've labeled is the right common carotid artery. And again, right, we're facing the cadaver. So remember, we flip-flop. Our left is her right, and our right is her left. So that's why everything seems mirrored here. We go from the aorta up into the brachiocephalic artery and into the right common carotid artery. And there are some more branches here. I don't have them labeled. We're not concerned with them. So don't worry about those. Now, if we were to go back to the aorta, go a little further and bypass the brachiocephalic artery or the brachiocephalic trunk, the next branch coming off of the aorta is the left common carotid artery. So going back, we see the right common carotid artery comes off of the brachiocephalic artery. But the left common carotid artery comes directly off of the aorta. And it continues on up. Here we can see it again as it passes behind some of this tissue. Now, if we were to stay in the aorta, bypass the brachiocephalic artery, bypass the left common carotid artery, the next branch right before the descending aorta is the left subclavian artery. And the left subclavian artery passes behind some tissue here. And we can see right there, again, is the left subclavian artery. Now, subclavian, remember, means below, beneath the clavicle. The clavicle, the collarbone, was here. It has been removed before we took these pictures. Same thing over on the right side. So those are all the arteries that we're concerned with in this image. Let's go back now and look at the veins. We can see here, this structure is the superior vena cava a very large uh, blood vessel that drains the upper part of the body. Everything above the heart is returned to the heart through the superior vena cava. Now, the first thing that enters into the superior vena cava is the right brachiocephalic vein. That's what we have right here, the right brachiocephalic vein. And what we can see here draining into the right brachiocephalic vein is the right jugular vein. This is the major vein that drains the right side of the head. Now, if we come over here, we can see the left subclavian vein. It passes behind some structures, ultimately into the superior vena cava. 
So now that we've labeled everything, let's compare everything that we were just looking at to our neck model that we have here. So the neck model right here where it starts, I've kind of drawn a line here to give you a rough idea of what we're seeing in the neck model. Here we have the underside of the jaw. Here we have the underside of the jaw. Here we have the larynx and trachea. Here is the larynx and trachea. Here's the thyroid gland. Here is a bit of what I believe is the thyroid gland. Can't really tell much from this image. But right here is where the cutoff for the superior vena cava is. That's about right here. And then the three vessels branching off of the aorta. Here we have the three vessels branching off of the aorta. So by using this labeled image, what I would like for everyone to be able to do is label this image and label both our neck model here and our image here. So now changing gears, and again, this one can be a little, well, I'll, I'll be honest, very disorienting if you don't know what you're looking at. What we're looking at here is the lower torso, the lower abdomen, right at the pelvis, right where the legs meet the body. So over here is the right side. Over here is her left side. This area right here, this is the muscle covering the uh, iliac area of the pelvis. The iliac crest uh, is about right here. So this area right here, traditionally, when we first open her up, this was all covered by intestines. We have pulled the intestines upward. We can see a little bit of the omentum here that holds the intestines. We could see a little bit of the sigmoid colon right here, the last part of the large intestines. But what we're concerned with are these two very large vessels here, and we can see they branch. So, before we identify them, let's give you an idea of how big these structures are. So, this is uh, my dissecting partner's right hand, and she is lifting up one of these vessels here. And you can see they are, again, about as big as her index finger, possibly a little bit bigger, around. Gives you an idea of the size of the things that we're looking at. But now this is the same image that we have right here. We're just going to label it. We have the two very large vessels here. This one on the right of the image, this is the abdominal aorta. So this is the very, very lowest point of the aorta before its final branch. And when it branches, it's going to be supplying blood into the legs. The first branch is the right and left common iliac artery. So the aorta terminates at the right and left common iliac artery. And those arteries will very quickly branch that we see here into the external and internal iliac arteries. There's a right and left external and internal iliac artery. I don't have them labeled here because we can only see this one branch. We can't see it over on the other side, and we can't see it on the veins that we're going to be looking at, so I've only labeled the common iliac arteries here. So the aorta branches into the right 
and left common iliac arteries, and they will branch again and continue on down further into the leg. Now, even though I don't have everything labeled, let's just see exactly what happens here if we were to go down the right side. We come down the abdominal aorta into the right common iliac artery, into the right external iliac artery, and eventually that would go down into the thigh, into the right femoral artery, and continue to branch from there. But let's see how the blood gets back to the heart from the legs. So we have the right common iliac vein and the left common iliac vein. Each of those had those same branches that we were just talking about with the arteries. But here are their veins. So the right and left common iliac vein and they merge right here at the end of the internal, I'm sorry, the inferior vena cava, not internal, the inferior vena cava. So at the lowermost point of the inferior vena cava, it branches into the right and left common iliac vein. And this inferior vena cava travels up through the abdomen, ultimately returning to the heart. So try to be able to label this image based on this. And again, here we have the model on the left. This is just a very zoomed in, very cropped. Uh, section of the blood vessel man from the lab, and the exact same region of the cadaver. So the red here are the arteries. So this is the abdominal aorta. Here is our abdominal aorta. Here is the branch into the common iliac arteries. And here's the branch into the common iliac arteries. Here we can see on the right side the branch into the external and internal right iliac arteries. Here we see the branch into the right external and right internal iliac arteries. Now if we look at the gray or the blue-gray, here we see the common iliac veins draining into the inferior vena cava. And here we see the right and left iliac veins, or the common iliac veins, draining into the inferior vena cava. Now, there may be some images from the cadaver that show up in quizzes or exams, so do practice labeling these in case you do see them later on and are asked to label something. And finally, this isn't really anything for you to know. It was just something interesting that we find when we're dissecting that I thought that I would point out here. We're back up in the neck again. Uh, this is one of the vessels up in the neck. And we have this small gray structure that was about the size of a pea, like the vegetable, a pea. And it was wrapped in this membrane and some very, very small vessels. Well, this is a lymph node. So when you are feeling sick and you have those swollen areas in your neck or the doctor's feeling in your neck, this is one of those lymph nodes, which we will learn about later this semester. All right, so that is the end of this presentation. Make sure you can identify some of those structures that we looked at in case you see them again. And I will talk to you in the next video.